Hi everyone, welcome to the Light Seller Podcast. Super excited to have you. Probably don't know who I am. My name is Kyra. I'm a somatic trauma resolution practitioner and I was working on the shop floor at the Light Seller for a year. Now I run our social media account. I love all things marketing and creativity. And yeah, today, Brittany and I are gonna be talking about Yoni steaming, something that's pretty new to me and I imagine it's new to some of you. So yeah, I would love for Brittany to introduce herself. Yeah, awesome. So uh, my name is Brittany Zier. I am the creator of Blissful Womb Care and I also work on the shop floor and with my business Blissful Womb Care, I support all things womb care related uh, from the practice of menstrual cycle and fertility awareness to pregnancy, birth and specializing in postpartum care. And so everything womb related and yoni steaming and herbs and women centered care is really what I'm lit up and passionate about and I'm excited to share with you some wisdom and some knowledge and some resources on yoni steaming. We'll talk a little bit about what that is, what that means, um, some different terms that you might hear around it, how to do the practice, and some herbs that might be supportive for you. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so the first thing that I want to know is what exactly yoni steaming is? <laughs> yeah, great question. Okay, so let's start with the word yoni because that might be something that is unfamiliar to a lot of women uh, or a lot of people in general. Uh, so yoni is Sanskrit for sacred place and yoni represents in Sanskrit, it is the entirety of the female reproductive system. So it is the vulva, the vagina, the womb space, it's the entirety of all of that. So uh, you might also hear this called as vaginal steaming or pelvic steaming. Mm. Those are some alternative terms that you might hear about. Right. Um, and I love the word yoni because it just, it feels so much lighter. It doesn't feel quite as clinical yeah. as like vaginal or pelvic steaming. I mean, like we need to reclaim and realize that these words, like this, this part of our anatomy and it's mm -hmm. a beautiful sacred space. But yeah, I find the, the term yoni just like really helps to soften around yeah. all of that and invite in more of this, again, honoring of this sacred place, the sacred space. Totally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. So um, little disclaimer before we dive a little bit further into this. Mm -hmm. uh, I am not an expert in yoni steaming in any way, shape or form. I I have a little bit of training in it. I have practiced yoni steaming for a few years myself now. I have had some really great results with it. I have supported others in integrating this practice as well. Mm. Uh, but everything that we're going to be talking about in here is just for informational and educational purposes. And if you have something really specific that you are looking to rectify or support yourself with, with yoni steaming, I recommend finding a yoni steaming practitioner or mm -hmm. someone who is a little bit more well versed in this to uh, help to speak specify what herbs might be more supportive for you and to integrate the practice into more regular life. So we're just talking mm -hmm. about general, general care of the womb in this conversation today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for me, I, yeah, maybe take us through what, mm, what the steps are of Yoni steaming and cause I, most of us know, well, if you're unfamiliar, there's herbs involved yeah. and water. Yes. <laughs> right. So I didn't finish answering your question there actually of like, what is yoni steaming? I talked about like, what is the yoni? Okay. But what is yoni steaming? Yeah. So yeah. yoni steaming is a traditional care practice that cultures around the world have used for centuries for attending to and caring for women's yonis and mm. pelvic health and any womb related um, functions. It can be for general health and well-being. It can support things like regulating a menstrual cycle, mm. um, releasing fibroids or helping to heal fibroids. It can help to break up scar tissue. Um, it can be used um, for many, many different modalities. And we'll mm -hmm. get into a little bit more of what that is as well. But essentially what it is, is it's sitting over a pot of lightly steaming herbs. Mm. And it Herbs are the primary factor, but you can also do this without herbs as well. You can simply just sit over a steaming pot of water, oh. put a little sprinkle of salt in that as well, and just the steam itself. So the vaginal tissue and the and the tissue in the pelvic region are some of the most absorbable 
um, and delicate tissues in the body as well. Mm -hmm. And so what the steam does is it travels up through the vaginal canal, up through the cervix and into the womb space. And it provides this warmth and the circulation into mm -hmm. this womb space. And then if you're using specific herbs, it, those herbs are going to have different botanical properties that are going to support you in different ways. And we'll get a little bit into what some of those might be as well. Okay. Um, and so you might see that there's things like a yoni stool. So there's lots of people who are crafting these yoni stools right mm -hmm. now that are beautiful. It's these boxes that you sit on top. It has a cut out inside of it and you put your pot of herbs underneath it and then you sit on top of it and ideally you want to have yourself completely wrapped up it's like this really warm cocoon uh -huh. you want to trap the steam in so that it continues to flow up so i did a yoni steam last night um in preparation for this it had been a couple months since i had done one myself and it's just one of those really beautiful like self-care practices it mm -hmm. really connects me to myself to my womb to like I feel like I flow through this stream of consciousness I can tap into the wisdom of my body and my mm. womb through this practice as well yeah so I wore a hoodie I had slippers on and I sat over top I don't have a stool I I create my own little structure <laughs> and so you can do this you can do this in many different ways. You don't uh -huh. the, you don't just have to have one of these fancy stools because those can also be a little bit expensive too. Right. So how I set up my yoni stool situation is I stacked a couple of yoga blocks mm -hmm. and then I put a big frying pan upside down on top of that and then I put my pot of herbs on top of that. Yes. Face up, obviously, otherwise it would all drain out, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have one of those like wooden trays that you know you put across your bathtub. Oh yeah. For yep. like when you're sitting in the bath and you put your wine or your book or whatever else on that. Yeah. Mine has a bunch of slats in it. So I put that over top oh. of the pot and then some folded up uh, face cloths to create my little cushion for my little bum. Oh, I love and it. And I sit on top of this. It's, it's quite a, a mountain. It's, it's a mountain mountain right can be a little bit unstable but that's what I have crafted at home yeah and so I sat on top of that and then I wrapped a blanket around my legs mm. to trap the steam in yeah and I lit a candle and sometimes I'll put on music or I'll mm. put on some singing bowls and last night I just decided I'm just gonna sit I'm just gonna listen I'm gonna tap in and see what decides to come through yeah in that and then the steam starts to envelop and it slowly starts to come up and my whole body just relaxes nervous mm -hmm. system down regulates mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden stuff just starts flowing through so in that lovely. way so you can create your own um i've heard of other women going to the thrift store and getting like one of those side tables that's all enclosed oh yeah and having their husband cut out a hole in the top smart so that they it's like a five dollar yoni steam stool yep um, another way that you can do it is you can be in child's pose and have like the pot underneath your hips and your pelvis okay. and again be all wrapped up in that way and that's a way to just kind of like rest and relax as mm. well. So there's no real right or wrong way to yeah. do it or any right or wrong setup. Find mm -hmm. what works, works for, you for you and what you have accessible in your home and then create from that place. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You know what it reminds me of? Um, the practice at least, which I've done many times. My mom's an esthetician and we put herbs in a pot, even when I was a kid, for my sinuses and my skin. And then, you know, you put your head over it and you wrap towels. Exactly, yes. So I'm like, it's, oh. it's like a facial steam, but for your yoni, that's exactly <laughs> yeah. what it is. For sure. Ah, yeah. I love it, yeah. I love it. So good, so good. Okay, so my next curiosity is actually around I know that you can do it just with water, like mm -hmm. plain. Are there different herbs that would be maybe supportive for different things? Or maybe you want to choose a specific herb depending on the time of the month. So yeah, herbs curiosity. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'll, I'll dive into some of these herbs. I have a list of about 13 here mm. with some kind of more specific properties and so again coming back to use your own discernment yeah. um do a little bit more of your own research but also trust your intuition as well like mm. if any of this and any of the things that i'm listing off are like 
whoa, that really resonates. I invite you to lean into that um, and craft and create your own herbal blend. So there mm -hmm. are Yoni Steam blends out there that lots of amazing herbal practitioners have created as well that might be more geared specifically towards certain conditions. Mm -hmm. um, I have some ones that I kind of work with in a rotation. And last night when I crafted mine, I was like, what do I have available here? And then I tapped in to see, okay, what what does my body actually really need and want at this time right. as well? So it's totally customizable to mm. meet you where you're at. You can start with two herbs. You can mm. start with five herbs. You can also play around with different herbs as right. well. So we'll go through the herbs and then I'll talk about like when is an appropriate time to do it and when is not. Yeah, um, okay. And then what are some of the conditions that it might be supportive with. Nice. Okay, so... First, one of my favorites that's most accessible and most familiar to people is lavender. Mm. So lavender is really soothing. It's really relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, it's antiseptic and has antibiotic properties associated with it okay. as well. Yeah. Rosemary, another one of my favorites, antiseptic and antifungal. Um, and it is a circulating herb, so it helps to promote the release and flow of stagnant and old energy and fluid. Mm. So to promote that circulation, if you're noticing that you have like a uh, scanty or a scanty flow or um, like really clotty or mm. like that dark, that dark red or brown blood. Yeah. Um, Rosemary might be one of those herbs that would be supportive to start to integrate in to promote that circulatory and warming effect okay. in the womb space. I have a question about that yeah. one. So let's say you've noticed in your cycle there's like that dark kind of blood. Is this something you would do prior to bleeding, while you're bleeding? Yeah, great. Okay, great question. Yeah, so let's actually come back to we'll come back to that when is the appropriate time to be doing this mm -hmm. so it's not recommended to do yoni steaming while you are bleeding okay so before or after mm. are the primary times to do it okay. so you want to avoid doing yoni steaming when you're bleeding when you're on your moon time when you know um mm -hmm. and also during ovulation, especially if you are planning on trying to conceive. So uh -huh. after right. your bleed has finished is a really great time to do that, to just bring that energy back in. If there is any of that stagnant energy in mm -hmm. your flow, um, or you're noticing towards like the end of your cycle where it was like a lot more of that brown stuff, you can do, you can do the yoni seeming after you're done bleeding to help just bring that fresh cleansing energy in. Right. Um, I love to do yoni seeming before my period. Okay. And if I can do that in the day or two before I know that my moon is coming, I will have minimal to no pain. Wow. While I'm bleeding. That's a big deal. It's wild. It's honestly really, really interesting. The first time I did it, I couldn't believe it. And then I was like, but was that really it? So then the next cycle, I didn't do any steam before. Okay. And I had cramps. And I was like, okay. And so I've kind of been dabbling in that. And sometimes I don't get to it before uh -huh. my moon comes. So... I track my cycle, uh, I do basal body temperature and cervical fluid, so I can usually have a 24 hour window uh, yeah. before before I know that my period is going to come, and if I have that space and time, I'll pop down on a, on a pot of herbs and allow that to happen, um, and if I don't, then I just know, okay, well this might be a little bit, a little bit more of an uncomfortable bleed, but yeah. honestly, the more that I do it and the holistic pelvic care work that I've done, I have minimal cramping wow. and pain during my bleeds now. And yeah. that's really incredible. So um, those are the primary times, like either before or after your moon time. Yeah. Avoid during ovulation if you're trying to conceive. Um, you also want to avoid um, if you have any sort of infection present, mm. um, if you have any open sores or herpes outbreak, anything like that. Um, this is also a really beautiful practice to do for postpartum healing and recovering, but mm -hmm. there's some parameters around that as well. Okay. So yeah. um, if you have had a cesarean, you want to wait until the cesarean scar is fully healed before you do any yoni steaming. So at least six weeks, mm -hmm. but that can be really supportive in helping to break up scar tissue wow. uh, and promote yeah. healing from the inside out from that major abdominal surgery and mm -hmm. any sort of... Um, any sort of repair that's needed in the womb. Mm -hmm. um, my In my own traditions, they will typically want to do yoni seeming within within the first nine days postpartum. So okay. they'll want to do yoni seeming three three times within those first nine days right. postpartum. 
the way that I was taught in my postpartum care training about yoni steaming in the postpartum time is it, it's it's safe and effective safe and effective mm -hmm. again use your own discernment around all this because some will say yes and some will say no so use your own discernment around this mm -hmm. um but generally you don't want to be doing yoni steaming in the first four to five days postpartum yeah. when there's that bright red blood and that really heavy bleeding the lochia the lochia that your body is releasing following mm -hmm. the birth of a baby but once that bright red heavier bleeding starts to subside and you have had no trauma or disturbances or right. um major interventions during birth then that around five days and beyond postpartum would be a really beautiful healing practice mm -hmm. um if you've had any tears or episiotomies or stitches or anything like that a sits bath in that early postpartum time might be more appropriate okay which is similar to a yoni steam but it's like a little herbal bath that you sit on on ah. the toilet that that your labia and your outer yoni area just gently rests in okay. so a lot of these herbs would be really supportive for that as well yeah um and so that might be a little bit more soothing yeah during that time too that makes sense yeah okay and before we go back to the herbs if someone has never done it before yeah. Is there like a good time in the cycle to do your first one? Is it more intuitive? Obviously without doing it during menses or ovulation. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I generally, for, for me and from my personal experience, mm -hmm. I think the the best time to do it is like in those few days before you're expecting your period. Okay. Yeah. Um, Especially like it's going to it's going to promote like a healthier flow. It yeah. helps to some of these herbs, but the steam in general as well is helping to create more of that circulation mm -hmm. and softening and relaxing the tissues within the womb, so that when the time comes for that endometrium lining to release, it has it does more with more ease. Yeah. So I like to recommend for the first time have that be kind of in the last week of your cycle. Yeah, would be ideal. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, and you have more herbs. I have more herbs. I have so many <laughs> herbs. Okay. <Exciting. laughs> so, okay, so we talked about lavender um, and rosemary. Uh, lemon balm is one that has antiviral properties and it can also help to relieve any itchiness or mm. irritation. So, yeah. Um, if you experience something like that, lemon balm might be something that you want to throw in. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, in my research last night, this wasn't one that I had heard of before, but I'm really interested in it. Dandelion, because obviously ah. dandelion is, you know, we view dandelion as a weed, but as we know here at the Light Cellar, like dandelion is one of the most versatile and nurturing herbs totally. that we can use to support our body. 100%. So dandelion, and I imagine it would be the leaf, not the root, um, in a yoni seam yeah. helps to improve endocrine and reproductive health. It rids excess estrogen, sugars, and toxins from the body. Wow, which we all need. <laughs> which we all need, right? Yep. <laughs> um, and so on, on, that, on that topic as well, I want to cycle back to like, honoring the sacred place of our womb space as well yeah. um because the womb is the portal of all life mm -hmm. we were all conceived and gestated within the womb we were birthed whether it was through the vaginal or through a cesarean birth but like we emerged from this sacred place so mm -hmm. it is the place where life force energy flows within us yeah and i also view this as the space too that we hold a lot of energy we hold a lot of emotions uh traumas lived experiences so another reason why i really like to do yoni seeming before my bleed comes is because i also view my bleed time as the physical release of anything that came up during that cycle mm -hmm. so whether that was you know an experience that happened in that moment in that cycle or if i was doing any sort of trauma work or reparative work, yep. inside out work, emotional work, this is the perfect time to begin to release that. I view it as like the physical releasing of anything that no longer serves. Yeah. So that's why um, the dandelion and the detoxification through the womb space as well can be really potent and powerful. Mm -hmm. And some of these other herbs that I'm going to talk about also have some like detoxifying and cleansing properties, but I also want to caution the the womb and the body is naturally coming into a natural detox and balancing right. out its pH levels. So you don't want to do too much of this. You don't want to go into this whole, like my, my yoni needs to be cleaned out. Right. <laughs> like, no, yeah. not, not necessarily. So like everything in moderation, moderation. and 
this is also where it would come in handy if you're working for a specific condition that you want support with to work with uh, like a, a pelvic seeming or yoni seeming practitioner or an mm -hmm. herbalist or someone like that who might be able to curate a blend that will be more supportive right. for that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So back to the herbs. Yeah. Okay. So my next favorite top herb that I use on a regular basis is calendula. Ooh, calendula. Yeah. Right? What do you love about calendula? I love bathing in it. Yeah. And then like, uh, yeah, doing the facial steam mm -hmm. and just, uh, I put it in salves. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Calendula is really soothing and antiseptic. Um, mm -hmm. It also helps to ease cramps and uh, can ease heaviness. Like if you have a heavy flow, okay. it can help to support that. Yep. Um, and it promotes cellular repair as well, which is why it's so good for the skin. Mm. Right. So calendula is one of those herbs that you'll find in in like skin salves or yep. um, tallow bombs or bath blends or yoni steams or sits baths because it's just mm -hmm. so versatile and really, really healing for the skin. So yeah. calendula is one that I will almost always put in any sort of bath or yoni steam blend. That yeah. I like. yeah. I was going to say that could be like a base yeah. that you have a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. I'll use like lavender, calendula and rose are kind um. of like my primary ones because they're really like aromatic and floral and really mm. soothing and calming as well. And then you can add in some more of the medicinal herbs. Totally. Yeah. From that place. And too. we can also put a recipe of how many parts of the herbs yeah. in our, um, description thing for sure that's yeah. a good idea yeah all right um so yarrow is another one that i include in my bath blends and in yoni steaming and sits bath blends as well mm -hmm. um, because it's a really great infection fighter um it can actually stop bleeding as well so if you're out in the forest or you're out exploring and you happen to cut yourself you find some fresh yarrow chew it up in your mouth and make like a poultice and you can put it yes. on your own and it'll stop the bleeding right yeah, it's crazy <laughs> uh, yarrow is incredible um i also know of yarrow to be like the medicine of the third eye so oh. it can really help to enhance your intuition and your spiritual connection cool as well um and because mm. the yoni the womb space is the sacral chakra like that opening up that channel and connection is yeah. really beautiful and important as well would you ever like drink like i'm thinking of like both ends you know like oh. yoni steaming while also drinking yarrow tea oh i would i don't see why not yeah. that, you know like yeah definitely getting it in from both ends and then that's going to have the nutritive properties mm -hmm. all throughout your body and your system as well i've never really drank yarrow tea it's quite strong yeah yeah that's good yeah. yeah yeah especially when you blend it <laughs> yeah blend it, blend it with some other things as well to help mask up some of that strong potent flavor <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Uva Ursi is another one that is a little mm. bit new to me, but it's an alkalizing herb that is specific for UTIs and reproductive mm -hmm. infections as well. So if that's something that you have recurrent UTIs or, or reproductive infections of any kind, Uva Ursi might be one of those herbs that will be supportive to totally. help to combat something like that. Yep. Mugwort. Mugwort is one of the best herbs for mm. womb space and women's health in general as well. So mugwort is warming in nature. It's cleansing. Um, it can help balance hormone productions. Wow. Um, it can gently stimulate delayed or stagnant menstruation as well. Okay. So if your bleed happens to be late yeah. for whatever reason, either drinking yarrow tea or not yarrow, mugwort tea mm -hmm. or taking the tincture or putting some mugwort in your yoni steam can right. be really supportive for helping to stimulate the flow of that. Mm -hmm. um, it can also ease menstrual cramps as well. So mm. that will be one of the ones uh, that I will often put in my yoni steam blends before my bleed comes as well, especially if the previous cycle was pretty painful. I'll mm -hmm. throw some mugwort in to just help to ease and relax um, that and bring on that uh, stimulation. Right. And it's antibacterial and antifungal nice. as well. Nice. Yeah. Um, wow. Shadavari. This is one that I found really interesting and I want to play around with this okay. and see how this works. Yeah. Shadavari is used a lot in Ayurvedic mm. medicine yep. um, and is really great for women's health and female reproduction system as well. It strengthens the uterus and it helps to re-lubricate if you have vaginal dryness. So that was the part that I found oh. to be really interesting. So for anyone who is experiencing vaginal dryness, whether that is from postpartum or hormonal imbalance or mm -hmm. perimenopause, or menopause like when your estrogen is low that would be something that i think would be really great to incorporate in and a little 
side note tangent here on some of the benefits of yoni steaming that I have experienced in my life is it what I have never used Chattavari, but mm. in any of these other ones, I will notice like that I am juicier, I am plumper, right. I, have, I have a lot more of that. I have a lot more of that natural lubrication. Uh -huh. And my partner is like, you feel different. And this, I'm a big fan. He's a big fan of the yoni steaming. He, whenever I'm like, I think I need it. He's like, yeah, go. Yeah. I we're, love it. We're a big fan of the yoni steaming. So it enhances uh, for me and for others that I've heard of as well, like sexual mm. pleasure, sensation. If right. you feel any pain or numbness during intercourse or um, anything like that, that experience of vaginal dryness, mm. um, this can just help to promote blood flow and circulation and enhance like your sensuality yeah this well. is also great because um, we're going to be talking about on instagram and facebook about shatavari and how it's a libido enhancer yeah. and uh, julie was telling me about how there's a, a traditional story of the woman with a hundred husbands oh yeah how she could sustain <laughs> all those husbands <laughs> because of the shatavari because right? of shatavari so <laughs> If you need it. <laughs> Maybe we should do an experiment and, yeah. see, that and see how that works. I, I, Shadavari is one that I haven't dabbled too much into. But right. I think that would be fun to play around with. Yeah. See who doesn't who doesn't want increased libido libido and sex totally. drive and connection with yourself and with your partner if yeah. you as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Shadavari. Shadavari. Okay, so rose, I said, was another one of my standard ones that I'll throw in virtually everything. One, it's just that beautiful floral scent. Mm. Um, it's tonifying as well. So, like, it helps to just kind of, like, strengthen and tend to the tissues in that way. Um, it's soothing and has some cleansing properties as well. And mm. I also think of rose as heart medicine. Totally. So, like, yeah. really soothing for the heart and for the emotional body. And, um, yeah, just really grounding and yeah. down-regulating. I yeah. love rose. Yeah, totally. Uh, two more on the list. So red raspberry leaf, one of a, mm. wait, next to mugwort, red raspberry leaf uh, and mugwort are kind of like my top favorites for yeah. women's health in general as well. Um, I was just at a women's retreat and we had an herbalist there who was talking about red raspberry leaf and she said, I believe every woman should be drinking red raspberry leaf every day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like yep. lots of times we'll think, right, one of the main properties of red raspberry leaf is it is it's tonifying and strengthening for mm -hmm. the uterus. Um, which is really beautiful. So you can drink it all throughout your pregnancy is what she said. Most women will drink uh, red raspberry leaf in kind of like the last four weeks of their pregnancy as well okay. to help strengthen and tone the uterus in preparation for labor and birth. Right. Um, but she said, you know, you can drink it all the way throughout your pregnancy right. as well to just continue to tone and strengthen that as the womb is continuing to grow and, and take shape and baby is growing in there yeah. as well. Um, so, um, it tones and strengthens the uterus and the pelvic muscles. It's a uterine relaxant as well. Oh. So lots of times we think about like, we need to strengthen these muscles, but no, they actually need to be relaxed. So if, if you have too much strength and too much tightness, then it can have a relaxing property. And if you're too relaxed then it can kind of have the opposite effect okay. as well. Right? I have a story on this yes, briefly. Share. So... As a retired professional dancer, most of us have really tight pelvic floors because we're always holding it up. And I've been taking raspberry leaf at least a week before my cycle. And I've literally noticed my back pain, the cramps, just like all of that has really gone down. Mm. So I'm like... Testimony. Testimony, <laughs> absolutely. And so this would be one, drink it. Yes. And steam and with steam it. it. <laughs> yes. Throw some yarrow in there as well, right? Like have it go through both ends. Yes. I love, I love to hear that. Yeah. That's really great. It's so good. Um, it's also blood building as oh, well, right? Okay. So, so that's also why it's really great to take all throughout your cycle as well, but especially leading up to your your bleed or that postpartum time as well to help build that blood mm -hmm. um, so that you can have a more effective release yeah. of that as well. Oh, makes total sense. Yeah. Uh, and then final one on my list is motherwort. 
Uh, so motherwort is also cleansing and blood building. Mm -hmm. Um, it's nourishing for the heart and emotional body Mm -hmm. as well. Um, and it's supportive for cramps. It's an antispasmodic. So, um, it can be really supportive to have if you are currently cramping or in preparation for that as well. So if you tend to have more painful periods, I would incorporate that as one of the herbs in a yoni steam beforehand as well Yeah. uh, for its antispasmodic properties. Um, it also relaxes the smooth muscles and helps to support circulation as okay. well. So when I did my steam last night, I did motherwort, red raspberry leaf, calendula, and rose. Nice. And it was just this beautiful, beautiful floral scent. Yeah. Um, and so you'll boil a pot of water mm-hmm. and then turn it off, let it come down a little bit. So you don't want to put the herbs in when it's boiling. So yeah. let it reduce down from that boil, move it off of the heat, and then you'll throw your herbs in. I don't really follow a specific recipe. I kind of like, I'm going to do this much of this. And I'm really intuitive Intuitive. with it. Mm -hmm. Um, Think about like half a cup to a a cup worth of herbs for about four four cups of water. And you can play around with that. Do more, do less. It's really intuitive Mm -hmm. in your own way. Um, And then I let it sit and steep for about 20 minutes with a lid on. Keep it covered. That helps to keep all of the essential oils. Oh, no. Do not put essential oils directly in a yoni steam. No. Too potent. Uh, (laughs) Fair enough. That can actually cause quite a bit of discomfort and damage as well. So you want to be using the the fresh or dried herbs, never the essential oils, Yeah. okay? So there's the natural essential oils that will be released through this steeping process. That is fine and safe, but just not the direct essential oils. Would you ever use hydrosol? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, yeah. I don't know about that. Something we'll investigate. Something we'll investigate. I feel like it might be okay given yeah. because hydrosols are the entire plant essence. Exactly. So yeah. it's like a it's it's like a really potent extraction. Yeah. Um so I feel like it would be okay, but yeah, maybe we'll do a little bit more look into that yeah. as well. Do your yeah. own research on that as well. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that I was also thinking when you were sharing about motherwort is it's so intense of a taste mm. that I know some people who like won't even drink it yeah. and they can't blend it in anything because of its yeah. strong taste. Yeah. So to be able to get it into the body through this way yeah. can be really supportive. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I'm really grateful. That's one of the ones on your list. Yeah, absolutely. For <laughs> yeah. sure. One of my, one of my favorites as well. Yeah. So yeah, so that covers off, uh, the top herbs that I recommend. We have yeah. all of these here at the light cellar, yeah, which totally. is really great as well. So you can come in and get the individual herbs and then start to craft your own blends. Um, or there's lots of other really amazing herbalists out there who yeah. already have some pre-made Yoni steam blends that you can buy that are already packaged and created with intention as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's really, adaptable to Mm -hmm. me wherever you're currently at yeah beautiful one last question that I have is like I'm thinking like age range Mm -hmm. of when for people who are just starting like young girls who are starting their periods adults yeah elders like what is the kind of age range to start this practice yeah so um that when you initially asked me that question when we were planning for this I was like oh I've never really thought about that in this Mm way. Um, And so I did a little bit of research. So Steamy Chick on Instagram is one of the top resources that I recommend for like all things Yoni steaming related. And she had written an article addressing that. And her recommendation and suggestion was after the first bleed. Okay. So once, once a young girl starts starts bleeding, starts her menstrual cycle would be an appropriate time. And then all the way up into menopause as well. Um, you know, because there's, there's lots of the hormonal imbalances that occur during menopause too. Uh, one other thing, yoni steaming during pregnancy is not recommended or advised. Um, there is some kind of uh, similar to around the postpartum time, there is some sort of conflicting yes and no around. It can be used to prepare for labor Mm. as well. So steamy chick, I think has created some resources around that too. So look into that. Um, 
And then one other resource that I, I just love to hear because it's not something that we hear, hear about very often. Uh, Nathan Riley, the holistic OBGYN, he's on Instagram, he has a podcast, he's down in the States. He was an OBGYN in the system. He has now since left the system and is he's still an OBGYN, but he is supporting pregnancy, birth, and women's health cool. through this real holistic lens. And he has interviewed quite a few people on Yoni Seeming practices. And he recommends it for his patients and has had wild, wild, wild results wow. with women with all kinds of different symptoms, whether it's PCOS, endometriosis, fibroids, um, you know, recovering from surgery or illness or anything like that, wow. like cleared up and, and repaired through a simple yoni steaming practice as well. So I would tap into his podcast to listen to some of the guests that he has had on there too, to learn a little bit more about how Yoni Seeming might support you. Yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. And we'll also share those two resources as well as the list of these herbs so that you can feel into them, use your intuition, maybe even research them for yourself if you want more information. Yeah. I think that's all the questions. Yeah. Yeah. So join in on the Yoni Seeming train. Yeah. It's honestly such a beautiful practice. It's a, it's a beautiful self-care practice for yourself to connect you to this sacred mm -hmm. space within your body, to tap into your innate wisdom, to tap into your intuition yeah. and to really come home. Most women are extremely, extremely disconnected yeah. from our wombs. Uh, we're disconnected. We are our periods and like all of these women's health symptoms that have become normalized yeah. it's not normal it's common but the western allopathic medical system isn't tapped into this yeah. so it's really about reclaiming your autonomy mm -hmm. connecting to your innate wisdom within and then moving from that place and it takes time yeah. it takes time to to listen and to feel into what feels right and true for you mm -hmm. but it's one of the most profound and powerful practices that I have integrated in my life. And so mm. I hope that you all take that and yeah. integrate it in whatever way feels nourishing for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you for tuning in. And yeah, you can always send us questions or comments or thoughts and yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.